Oh my gosh, this is so good. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be talking about the Daft Mill Lowland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Distillery, one of Scotland's newest, smallest, and hardest distilleries to find a bottle of. Now, it is a single estate farm distillery that was founded in 2005 by Francis and Ian Cuthbert. Now, they started the distillery because they weren't altogether happy with the prices they were getting for the barley they were um, growing on their farm. They were selling it to distilleries and, and, and to maltsters to go towards distilling. And they figured, well, if we're not getting the prices we want, maybe we should just distill the barley ourselves. Hence, we have the Daft Mill Distillery. Now, it only operates in between harvest during the quiet seasons. And these typically happen with a two month interval in the summer and a two month interval in the winter. Hence, with the typical core range releases that we see, from Daft Mill, they're typically a summer and a winter release. They'll be demarcated in that sort of fashion. We also see, you know, single casks and, and, and the such as well, much like this Kensington Wine Market single cask. But the typical releases you'll see will have that w summer and winter batch uh, denoting when they were actually distilled. Now, they didn't release a single drop of, of whiskey until it was mature. They were asked, you know, when are you gonna release their whiskey? And they basically said, when it's ready. And that's exactly what they did. Their first release was actually a 12 year old whiskey, which is not common. Most distilleries are very eager to get their whiskey out to people because they start getting money back into the distillery to help pay for all the things they paid for. Not so with Daft Mill, they waited all that time. And so their first whiskey was a 12 year old. It was distilled in 2005 and it was bottled in 2018. Now, one of the interesting things that I've learned about the cask management at Daft Mill comes from an anecdote from Andrew Ferguson, the owner of Kensington Wine Market. Uh, and that just happens to be where this single cask comes from. And, and that's when the Speyside Cooperage gets their casks. They'll actually let Francis Cuthbert uh, know. And that's because he he's actually quite close to the, the cooperage. And being the farmer that he is, he'll get in his tractor, he'll get his trailer, and he'll haul down to the, the cooperage to pick out some ex-bourbon casks. Now... Um, what's really interesting about that is this means that he's actually getting the, the pick of the litter. He actually get, is getting first crack at these casks. And not only that, he gets to personally inspect each and every one of them and choose the ones he wants. So I imagine he's nosing them. He's checking them to make sure they're all really good quality casks, which maybe that's part of the magic of Daft Mill. Maybe that's part of the secret in their recipe um, and is what's leading to this really beautiful top-notch great quality whiskey. It's one of the elements. Now, they're, they're aiming to create a light, fruity, lowland style of whiskey. And the way they've chosen to do this, obviously, is by uh, not only cask selection that, that lends itself to that, but also things like long fermentation. Uh, their, their fermentation times are usually about like 72 to 100 hours. Um, even the shape of the stills, they, the stills are created in a way to, to have a high level of, of reflux. And so they've really gone about making decisions to try and create that style of whiskey because that's what I imagine they enjoy drinking. If I owned a distillery, I would want to make a whiskey that I would enjoy drinking. Let's get to the stats on this cask. So this is the Daft Mill Kensington Wine Market 2008 single cask. Now, this was distilled in 2008, but the barley was grown and harvested in 2006, and then malted in 2007. Now, this whiskey was bottled in 2021, uh, so that it is about 12 to 13 years old. It doesn't actually specify on the bottle. It is bottled at cast strength, 56.8% ABV. It's non-chill filtered. It's natural color. It comes from a first fill X bourbon barrel, and it's the first Daft Mill single cask to be released in Canada. Now, if you're in Canada, the only place you're going to find Daft Mill is at Kensington Wine Market. Currently, I think they have the 15 cast strength. They have another batch of their uh, standard uh, releases, either a summer or a winter batch, and they used to have this single cask. It did sell out quickly, but when they had it, it sold for about $250 Canadian, which actually is a fairly reasonable price, all things considered, for a Daft Mill single cask. All right, let's 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 get into this glass here. Now, you might notice that this bottle here is unopened. That's because I've been uh, lucky to have a number of samples of this whiskey. This is my third or fourth time trying this. And because I've had samples coming in through tasting kits or through people um, graciously sharing them with me, 
I haven't had to open this yet, but one day it's going to happen. On the nose, starting off with... Oh my gosh, some very beautiful, sweet, juicy malt tones. As soon as you get underneath that, you got just like ripe, popping, juicy tropical fruits. Oh, cantaloupe, melon. Definitely, um like pear drops, like pear, pear candies. So when this first went in the glass, it was, it was all malt. It was all, um, sort of, uh, baking goods, like confectionaries, these sorts of things. And once you give it about 10 minutes in the glass, it just starts singing. It starts singing with these beautiful fruit notes uh, along with those dessert tones I mentioned earlier. It's just this lovely dance. I'm getting like oatmeal raisin cookie. There's some lovely grassy floral notes going on here. A little bit perfumed. I uh, recently had the Deanston 18 year old, the old brown label 18 year old. And this reminds me of that, but on steroids. Um, just taking it up like two or three notches from that old uh, brown label Deanston 18. So a touch of like waxiness to the nose as well, but still like rather floral. And those fruits, like if I had to describe the fruits right now, it would be maybe um, a sweet fruit juice, sort of like the bright, sweet, fruity part of Five Alive without the acidity. So you take the, the acidity and the excessive sourness out of like a Five Alive, uh, like a tropical punch, like fruit juice. And those are the type of fruits you have here. Really engaging nose. I could actually nose this for hours. This is a beautiful nose. All right, let's get to the palette here. Uh, question for you. Have you ever had a Daft Mill? If so, did you like it? What one was, uh, was it? And do you think it's worth the money? Please comment down below. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And consider becoming a Patreon member where I um, post additional videos um, every month. All right. Takes a different turn on the palate. Malty, toasted oak for me, vanilla, huge vanilla tones, sweet honey, very clear, like sweet honey. And it's a floral honey, so I'm thinking... Oh man, this is gonna be oddly specific, but I was at the Christmas market and we had this um, honey that was referred to as like the champagne of honey, fireweed honey. Um, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I should probably go back and pick up some so I could do some uh, comparisons. Mm -hmm. Graham uh, cracker, vanilla pear and apple but with a, a slight touch of like a grapefruit bitter citrus that's in there too which is nice it really cuts through um those sweet malt tones just a little bit um oak spice is there there's also a bit of like um almost like a, a wood varnish sort of uh note there as well hmm Where there was really like tropical notes on the nose, um, the fruits in, on, on the palate for me are, are much, much darker. Maybe it's the first Phil X bourbon, but I'm getting like a, a dark cherry note or even almost like towards like an amaretto, like a, a, an almond based sort of liqueur note as well. Um, so me, yeah, if, if I had to guess, those are being derived from from the cast type itself. But the, the palate just is... It, it's it's finishes um the the, the mid pal going to the, the finish with just lovely sweet baking spices and that's where i want to go with the finish right now sweet malty vanilla toffee butterscotch and then given time to mellow it just is more of those sweet um baking spices and 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 they're, and they're not they're not prickly they're not like cracked black pepper or anything like that it's like just really balanced nutmeg and cinnamon sort of notes this is a beautiful whiskey, guys. This is this is gorgeous. 
Hmm. Yeah, no, that is dynamite. Um, and that might be why I'm being a little precious with this bottle. I'm drinking my samples and I'm looking forward to on a very special day opening up this Daft Mill single cast from Kensington Wine Market. Great job on this pick, guys. Great job bringing this into the Canadian market. I cannot thank you enough for doing things just like that because I don't know if there's another way I would get my hands on this bottle. In regards to score, what would I score this? Um, honestly, I'm verging on a 90. If I'm anywheres with it, I'm between an 89 and a 90. I'm probably going to err on the side of caution here and go down to 89. Uh, when I do open this, as it develops in the bottle, I could see it getting better and better, and it could climb that rank into, say, a 90 on the point scale. This is beautiful stuff. This is up there with uh, things like the Single Malt of Scotland Imperial I had earlier this year. It's not quite there with, with the fruits on the palate for me. Um, but it's in the same realm. Really fantastic whiskey, guys. Um, I cannot say enough good things about this. And I'm looking forward to trying more Daft Mill in the future. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, again, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my Patreons for all your support. And I hope you come back for more reviews in the future. For now, from the West Coast, until next time, slunge.